Well, hello once again. Today's topic, I'm going to turn another sphere. Spheres are always a lot of fun to work on. And I've got this pretty well leveled off. And I've got this between centers. I'll probably put a tenon or a spigot on one end. Now the twist today is I'm going to complete this sphere in a donut chuck by Ron Brown. Now initially I was going to do a video using Ron Brown's donut chuck making a sphere, which I did, and that's in this video. So I decided I needed to show a little bit more the versatility of this tool, so I ended up doing a little bowl. I didn't turn the entire bowl, but I finished off the bottom of it. And in this part right here that I'm working on, I'm going to do a ladle. And to tell you the truth, I've never done a ladle before. So you and I are going to experience a ladle being turned. Now the other thing I should mention is I made this ladle. It's just a spindle turning. And this part here is really a ball or a sphere. And this was too long for my smaller lathe. And I've got a little clip showing how I fixed this onto my inch and a quarter spindle. I've got an adapter on there. Uh, this just wouldn't clear the bedways. So let me get going. Let me uh, get my tool rest up here and we'll, we'll finish off the inside of this ladle. Now you may notice that I've got my ladle handle angled a little bit. That'll um, place that opening in a little bit different spot. It'll look more like a ladle. All right, I'm going to make sure my bolts are all tight in the back here. And I clear everything. I think I'm ready to go. I'm going to take a skew chisel and just make a point in there so I have a little recess for my drill. I'm going to just take a little uh, drill bit with a handle. Okay, now I just took a little parting tool and define where that rim is going to be. I'm going to start out with a gouge and try to just hog out some of that wood. Now, no matter how you chuck a ladle up or a similar device with a spinning propeller, there it is right there. It's difficult to judge the depth of this, so I probably took 10 or 15 minutes of footage, literally, and reduced it down to a minute or a minute and a half. And I go through a number of tools, gouges, scrapers, and eventually I take most of the material off with a little hollowing tool with a carbide cutter, and that worked really well. But other than that, I'm going to just uh, work and uh, reduce the material in there. And I'll do most of the work on this off camera. Right here I'm using a box scraper, which really worked pretty good. But uh, I did get a catch with one of the tools and kind of threw this off center. So I had to readjust that. So you have to be careful. And it's, again, a little bit difficult gauging the wall thickness and the depth of your ladle. Luckily I accomplished this without any great mishap. There's a little quarter inch bowl gouge that worked fairly well. And keep in mind this is really just a, a cross grain bowl. Now with the camera turned off I tried several different tools but I found that this little hollowing tool with a carbide cutter on the end of it worked really well. So I'm going to continue and just uh, 
take a lot more of that mass out. It's still pretty thick down there. It's time for a little sanding now and be careful don't get your fingers or your hands next to this spinning handle. Anyway, use a sanding stick, go through a couple grits and clean it out with a toothbrush and eventually I'm going to put a little bit of Yorkshire grit in there right here with my finger. Wrap a paper towel around that uh, sanding stick and do a little bit of buffing there and I'll end up with a little bit of friction polish and I'm very happy with the inside of that. Came out even though it was a little bit scary to turn that. Okay, there's a close-up of the inside of my ladle all finished. Now I'm going to just uh, loosen up my wing nuts and Take my ladle out of the donut chuck. And that was held very securely throughout the process. I did have a one catch that knocked it off center, but uh, that was a pretty good catch. I was using a tool I probably shouldn't have stuck in there. Anyway, there's my ladle. All finished, except for the ends. I need to do a little bit of sanding on each end of the ladle. <laughs> Whoops, I joke. Well, I'm going to take a second and do a little hand sanding on my ladle. I think it came out really nice. And I can't sit down in the shop without having a dog on my lap, which is all right. What do you think? If I could just teach her how to sand. Yeah. This little ladle is some hard maple. And I'm going to put just a little bit of uh, friction polish on this. And I'll certainly give you some close-ups of it. No. I'm not sure if I'm ever going to use this ladle in a pot of stew. It's not very big anyway. Sometimes you just make these as a decorative item. So I'm going to just put a little bit more friction polish on that right there on the end and on this end. Yeah. I'm going to move on to a sphere and then the very last segment will be uh, a short clip on finishing the bottom of a bowl using the donut chuck. So there's my ladle and you can see the uh, the angle of the the cup is uh, tilted just a little bit. Anyway, I like that a lot. Okay, let's go to work now. We got to move on. Are you ready? Now I think the really neat thing about doing a sphere on the lathe is there are so many different ways to do this. Now I'm not making a Timken roller bearing quality sphere or ball bearing. So on my calipers right here, I've got this middle dimension marked. It's right at six inches, which just was very fortuitous. So, six inches, and of course half of that is three. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark, there's cocoa. I'm going to mark on my lathe three inches on either side of my center line. Now if you'd like to spend more time watching another old guy making a sphere, right I'll put up links to my... Uh, playlist of sphere videos and you can watch those on your own. I'm rushing through this. This probably takes, uh, you know, an hour, hour and a half to get to where I'm going and it's going to 
just take a few minutes to watch it in uh, speeded up time. Here I'm marking my layout. And I'll begin turning facets right here. And I just increase the number of facets from this to this to this. And eventually there'll be like 16 smaller facets and I simply connect those. Now I don't think we should take ourselves too seriously. I'm making a sphere and I'm just doing it for the heck of it. And I'm trying to do it in a little bit different way than I've done in the past. And again, we're not trying to make something absolutely perfect. This is not too bad. I think this sphere is, is really pretty good. I can't feel any uh, imperfections in that. But what's the point? You know, if you're a machinist or an engineer and you're trying to make something on a metal lathe that's perfect, okay, that's cool. They also make jigs you can put on your lathe and they kind of rotate around a point and you can do that. What I'm making right now, it ain't going to be perfect. So, I don't want you to be disappointed. Now, whenever I make facets for this sphere, there are high points. And right now, I'm starting to take down those high points. And this block of wood, this blank, which was a cylinder, is going to start looking more like a sphere. And I think right there I was doing a little bit of scraping. I still have that center line on there. I want to maintain that pencil line right in the center, which indicates the diameter. And as I rotate that 90 degrees, it'll still be there. Now this may end up as a lawn ornament, but that's okay. Now, I need to start thinking about the donut chuck and how I'm going to put that in my lathe and finish little areas like this and rotate that sphere. Well, what did I learn making this part of the video? Well, I learned that at this point, I should have taken some time and really sanded this very well. It just was a little bit more difficult later on, but oh well, I never intended this to be a polished ball bearing. So anyway, let's uh, move on. Made another one of my little half round templates to, to kind of make sure that was all round in different directions. So I'm going to take this down a little bit and I'm going to saw that off. All right, now this is really the part I've been leading up to, and that is to chuck my sphere up and finish the ends right here. Now let's look at the components of this amazing donut chuck. So I need... All right, here we are. So I'm gonna line this up on the very bottom of this, on this base plate. Because my sphere is round, obviously, that's going to be a problem being centered on that. Now, if I had a bowl, I wouldn't need that. So that'll go in something like that. Now, another component of this is this outer ring. This is six inches. Now, my sphere is also six inches, so this won't work. The ring is just slightly too large for my six inch sphere. Provided with this, whoa. Okay, provided with this donut chuck is a four inch reducer. And that'll go towards the headstock and it's rounded there so it won't hurt my, my sphere. The next thing I need to do is connect the base plate and the top plate here, this outer ring with some threaded bolts. Now, Ron provides a couple different sizes. I'm gonna need this larger one for this six inch sphere. So I'm gonna just uh, 
line this up right here. I'll put all my bolts in. Now you have a couple options here. I can put this farther out, but I think this will be a good size right here. Probably offer a little bit more support. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to loosely lock in these bolts with a washer and a wing nut. And you are looking at the back side of the donut chuck and this simply threads into my lathe spindle. If you're interested in one of these products you can do a little bit more research on Ron's website. And I know he's made some changes over the years. Some of these accessories will snap into a scroll chuck with appropriate jaws. This particular one just threads in which is pretty nice. So, I've got my reducer right in here that's all ready to go. I've got the rounded radius side facing that way so it'll uh, contact my sphere. And I'm going to hold this additional ring right in the center and that'll help me line up my, my piece. Okay, I spent a little bit of time off camera lining all this up and tightening this down. Let me show you a couple things that I had to do. Now my sphere was too large to put in between these two bolts. So I had to take one of the bolts out and put the sphere in and then uh, replace the bolt. Now, there's a couple dimensions you have to look at. If it's running true right here, and I've just got my tool rest up against that and that's running about as true as I can get it. The other dimension, the other position is going this way. It's a little bit off, but the main thing is I can reach this area right here and get rid of this. Now the other thing right now, you can't see it, but I've also got that center line right in here on my sphere. And that's going to help me maintain the right diameter throughout this process. I'm going to make sure all my bolts are, are tight. As per the instructions, you are not to exceed 750 RPM when using this device. Get a little bit longer tool rest in here. Now I'm going to turn the dial on the speed of my lathe completely down. And something else, I'm looking right through this direction and I think my sphere is running fairly true. So I'm going to take a gouge and just do some draw cuts. Turn the speed up a little bit. All right, and that's all there is to it. Now I'm going to take a negative rake scraper and just take that little ridge off right there. I'm not going to do it, but I could do a little bit of sanding while it's in this position. So, so I'm going to loosen this up and I'm going to rotate it 180 degrees and deal with the other end of this sphere.
Okay, I'm working on the other end a little bit and what I did was I took a pencil and just drew a line in that area that's already trued up and I just worked this area down a little bit. And I can see down through here and see that radius. Try to blend that in a little bit. And I'm using this negative rake scraper and it's working fairly well. Alright, now, what did I learn? When I set out to do this video, I really wanted to experiment and explore using this donut chuck with a sphere. Well, I've been turning for 30 years or so, and I've developed a lot of different ways to chuck up a bowl, a hollow form, a sphere. Anyway, if you're new to wood turning, this tool may benefit you more than it does somebody like me who's been turning for a long time. This works. It works very well. One thing I would have done when I was over at my Powermatic and it was more between centers, I would have sanded this area to completion. And then I can just simply sand this area. I think it's very nicely round. Let me take this out of here. All right, now I've got my sphere out of that uh, donut chuck. And I'll tell you what, I think I did a pretty good job maintaining that diameter. Uh, right here, I've just got just a little bit of that original pencil line, which means my diameter kind of held true throughout the process. And if I rotate it 90 degrees, I'm probably shy a millimeter of being in the same diameter in the other direction. So anyway, I'm very happy with that. It all depends how you chuck things up. If you have a vacuum chuck, if you have other methods of chucking up a device, I think this would work really, really well with a bowl. I think it would probably work a little better with a bowl. But how often do you turn a sphere? And there may be other ways and better ways to uh, complete a sphere. What I'm doing is pretty rough. Uh, I don't, this will probably end up out in my garden. I don't know. Let me show you one more aspect of this donut chuck. All right, what I've done is I've taken the time to put in a little bowl that I've been working on. And actually you'll see this in another video. But I've taken the longer bolts and I've replaced them with the 4-inch bolt. Otherwise, they're going to hit your lathe back in here. So, I just had to do this. I had to do one more example using this donut chuck. I've brought my tail center up to line this up. Okay, so that's in there securely. All I have to do is spend a little time right here and take that little nub off. And I can do some sanding, I can reach that whole area right in there with some hand sandpaper or my drill. Now this shouldn't take more than uh, just a second to take this nub off there. Okay, let me do one more thing here. I'm going to just take a parting tool and make a little detail on the bottom of this. I'll just take a couple grits of sandpaper and just very quickly go over this. Let me take my little bowl out of here. When I first started using Ron's accessories like this donut chuck and the off-center chuck and some other ones, it takes a little bit of uh, research and study to kind of figure out how to use these. But once you set them up, well, they're set up and you don't have to kind of repeat that process, they're really not that hard to, <laughs> lost my washer, they're really not that hard to figure out.
Okay, there we go. All right. So there's my little bowl, and the bottom is all finished. And when you use this on a bowl, you want to have everything else completed, and you can do that when your bowl is in your chuck. But sometimes it's difficult to reverse it and finish off the very base of that. And I'm a firm believer in reversing a piece, whether it's a hollow form or a bowl or whatever you're doing, even a lidded box, you can reverse it and finish off that base, put a little detail in there, and that shows people you took the time to do it. And especially for other wood turners that might be looking at, at what you turn. So there we go. Thank you again for watching this video and I'll talk to you next time.